All right, hello everyone. So my name is Heirikus and uh, I brought a talk with me today uh, for, s for something I built for myself because I felt that was missing for a long time. And so I titled this talk, Where Trust Ends, Certificate Pinning for the Rest of Us. Okay, so what's, go what's this going to be about? So I'm, I'll talk a little bit about what is HTTPS and why do we trust it today for our communication over the internet? Why some people don't trust it for some things? What potential attack vectors there are today? Um, Off-the-shelf remedies, how does the industry try to fix this? And uh, at the end, how to take back control for yourself if you want to be sure that you are really talking to your own servers at home, certificate pinning for everyone. All right. <coughs> so if you have questions, just uh, ask right away or at the end of the talk as you prefer. So a quick primer on uh, what HTTPS is today when you use a web browser and uh, you do online banking or you talk to some servers, or to Wikipedia or to any other site today, it's usually HTTPS, which means uh, it's encrypted. And um, you also assume that the service you connect to is also authenticated, so which means you are actually talking to the server you think you're talking to. So that's two very different things. The one is authentication, which means HTTPS makes sure that the server you think you talk to actually you are actually talking to. And then there is encryption and privacy. So once it's been established that uh, you're really talking to your bank and not to a fraudster, then encryption is switched on so that nobody can eavesdrop on you and see what you are actually doing over the connection. But it's two different things. All right. Um, so how does it work in practice? So at the beginning, you type in a, a, a domain name, then the domain name gets resolved into an IP address, and then a TCP connection is established to port 443. And then what happens first is the web server sends a certificate to the web browser, and the certificate contains a so-called certificate chain, public-private key pairs, and the browser checks this certificate chain and um, makes sure at the end there is a root certificate that it has in its root certificate store. And if all the certificates in that, cha in that chain say, OK, I validate, I vouch for the next certificate, then you can be sure that uh, you are actually connected to your bank. So if something goes wrong, for example, a certificate has expired, or there is no root certificate for, for this website in the browser store, then you usually get an error message saying, there is something wrong, have a closer look. Or in some cases, the browser even completely refuses to actually load the web page. And But if everything checks out, you get this green logo at the left side of and then um, encryption starts and the web page is loaded. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, actually, quite a number of things can go wrong. Um, under certain circumstances, you are prone to man-in-the-middle attacks uh, with forged certificates or with previously self-signed root certificates. Well, how can that happen? Anyone remembers DigiNotar? Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. Dutch registry for root certificates who signs certificates for banks, for you, for me, for everyone. So they were broken into and the attacker just uh, uh, created uh, certificates and signed it with a key of DigiNotar and uh, took those uh, certs for Google and for other organizations. And so he could imposter Google by breaking into DigiNotar. Well, they don't exist anymore today for that very reason. And so it's not a theoretical thing. It's also a practical thing. It has happened, and not only with DigiNotar, but also with other certificate uh, authorities. Then another thing is you have state actors who, are p who have potential control over certificate authorities. Um, so if they want to, under very special circumstances, if you are a prime target, then they can just create a certificate for themselves for, for a bank or for whatever they're interested in your communication and use that. Um, an attacker could just send an, in, an invalid certificate and do a man-in-the-middle attack, so terminate your tunnel and then establish a new one. You get an error message, but uh, well, you can just hope that people ignore it. 
And uh, while in some companies they do that for different purposes and they actually teach people to ignore the warnings and I think that's a, that's a very dangerous thing, right? And then there is a root search of companies to secure internet traffic. So in some companies when you work there, they have imported their own root certificate in the browser or in the operating system. And so any HTTPS connection gets intercepted between the internet and the intranet of the company. You still get the green logo, but actually what happens is at the, at the border, they decrypt all the communication, look inside for whatever purposes. So I guess German companies only have very good intentions. They want to make sure there are no viruses and stuff in there, but you can also use it for malicious purposes. And you don't see anything because uh, the root certificate they use they imported that in the browser because it's their PC and uh, it's totally unclear whether that happens or not until you take a closer look. Well, those are the attack vectors today. And for most things, well, you can forget about it because if you just go to Wikipedia, for example, at least in our country, well, it's not a problem. Should that get intercepted? No problem. But in other countries or for banking websites, you really want to be sure that that is not happening. And how can you make sure of that, actually? Before I come to what is actually done to make things a little bit more trustworthy, let's talk a little bit about why a lot of people don't have a lot of trust in this system. So I was talking about root certificates earlier, which means that's the certificates in the browser's certificate store, which vouch for the validity of the chain of a, uh, of a certificate you get from a website. And a typical browser today uh, trusts more than 100 root certificates. So 100 or more than 100 organizations in the world you trust implicitly because the browser trusts them. And there is always this running gag, you, tr you have to trust the Hong Kong post office. Uh, they can make a certificate and uh, for everything and you trust it implicitly. Your browser trusts the Hong Kong post office, but it's, it's actually true. I, I looked it up in the Firefox browser. There is the Hong Kong post office. So it's, it's not a joke. It's real. All right. So basically what you have to do is you have to trust a, a hundred and more root, or root certificate authorities that they are not, well, that they are not doing strange things and, uh, well, undermine your trust. And that's an awful lot of authorities I have to trust and I don't trust that all these, these organizations for some of the things I really want to, to have secured. And then two words of caution on this very, well, widely spread operating system that starts with a W. Um, there are a couple of nasty things going on there. So if you have an antivirus program installed on that operating system, uh, what that usually does, it installs its own uh, root certificate in Firefox and into other browsers. And what they do is they also intercept any incoming uh, communication and re-encrypt it and send it to the browser. Again, for checking for viruses and other things. But obviously that program can read everything you do. So, well, some people don't like that a lot. Um, and then the second bullet point is Firefox also can fall back to system certificates on, on, on that operating system. And that has been done to allow companies to insert their own root certificates to secure their network, which means that they, can, that they will intercept all uh, incoming encrypted web traffic and, and have a look inside before they forward that. And so usually Firefox has its own certificate store, but um, they, it can also be made to fall back to the system certificate. So you have to be aware of that. So in effect, those two things completely undermine the chain of trust in the browser. So other external programs, they spy on the website's content that you load. So you have to be aware of that as well in order to judge how secure your connection and how private it actually is. A lot of text here. So there are approaches to increase the trust because 100 certificate, 100 plus certificate authorities, I don't have a lot of trust in that. So the first thing that was done is uh, have so-called certificate revocation lists. So if a certificate was stolen, 
um, it could be put on a revocation list and in theory the browser could actually check it and if it's on such a list then it could refuse the certificate but it's actually pretty worthless these days because uh, the browsers assume if they can't reach the server for the certificate revocation list then everything is okay and they let this thing through so it's not it's, uh, it doesn't improve trust a lot then there was a great idea called HTTP public key pinning. Um, what that basically did is, or still does today, is that the, the, the web server can say in the headers, only accept this certificate or this certificate. And even if you send another valid certificate, the browser will block it because once it has seen the HPKP header once, it will only trust those which, which it has previously seen. Um, which means basically that certificate pinning. Unfortunately, Google wants to abandon that in the browser. Perhaps they already have. I haven't really followed that anymore, but they have said ah, they don't want that anymore. It's too complicated. It's too error prone because if you make a little mistake and you um, uh, with, with uh, the wrong information inside, then you you throw yourself out of the system and you can't get back in until uh, the, the timeout that you have set is actually over, so you can you can can actually throw yourself out. So that's not a good thing. Um, Firefox still supports the feature, but with Let's Encrypt that we have today, which is a great thing, I, I use Let's Encrypt myself. But what they do is they renew a certificate every three months, and so that's a bit of a problem for HPKP because here you really want to have the same certificate all the time and just want it revalidated. You can change Let's Encrypt in a way to work with HPKP, but uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. And uh, then we come to the next point. It's actually difficult to actually check if HPKP works because you need to have uh, several valid certificates and then try out for yourselves whether those who are not in the header are actually rejected or not. Um, yeah, so uh, I liked HPKP even though it was difficult, but since it's uh, slowly abandoned, it's not the future. And then there is certificate transparency. That's what the industry is, uh, is doing these days. Um, what that means is that every certificate from those 100 trusted uh, certificate authorities gets put in a public ledger. So for example, if, if I make a certificate for myself with Let's Encrypt, it gets in this public ledger and if some other authority later on would also generate a certificate for my domain, which I didn't do myself, it is also put into the ledger and I could in theory find out that that actually happened by looking into the ledger. But who's doing that actually? So you can only find out that things have gone wrong after the fact if you suspect something or you set something up to watch the ledger all the time for your domains. If if somebody else has actually generated a certificate uh, maliciously for your domain. So uh, it's nice, but there is no warning if somebody forges uh, a certificate for you, unless you really look very closely and nobody does that. At least not me. <laughs> okay, so not trust the story so far. Uh, when using TLS certificates, you trust all root certificates and you trust the system behind it that it prevents everybody from forging certificates. And if your trust does not stretch that far, what is called certificate pinning is your friend. Pinning means on your side, on your end of the communication, you say, okay, forget about all these root certificates. I only trust certain certificates for certain domains. Um, and so I pin them. And even if I get a valid certificate f that is not pinned for a domain, I will reject it. Um, so some people actually do that. And there have been approaches in the past to actually do the certificate pinning in Firefox. There has been a, a, a great extension called Certificate Patrol that did exactly that. It, it, once it saw a certificate for a domain, it locked it, it pinned it. And if there was a different certificate later on, it said it, it, uh, uh, there was an, uh, a window saying, okay, there is a new certificate, could be, could be a good one, could be a bad one, have a look and acknowledge that this change of the certificate is actually valid. 
But then, unfortunately, Mozilla re removed its own web browser API for, for, for uh, old add-ons, and the new API did not support the interruption of, uh, uh, of a TLS connection and also no, no inspection of the certificates that were used. So, unfortunately, that add-on was dead. All right. Um, uh, but at least some other programs did certificate pinning or do, certi do certificate pinning today, web-based. For example, the DivX5 uh, app, which you can have on Android for your calendar and your contacts. Uh, in the settings, you can pin the certificate. It's HTTP, HTTPS-based, so there you can pin the certificates if you have an own cloud at home and use it for, cert uh, and use it for calendar and address book, for example. And here you can make sure that um, this thing does not connect or aborts the communication to your server at home um, if a new certificate comes along, even if it is valid. So Conversation, the XMPP client on, on Android, um, you can also pin the certificate there. So if, uh, the, if Conversations establishes a, ser a connection to the server and the server sends a new certificate, um, it can also block it and you have to manually acknowledge that first. Chat Secure on iOS does it as well, and Nextcloud Notes on Android uh, has an option as well. I'm not sure if it's working though. All right. So the cool thing is, in September 2018, Mozilla added a new API that allows to check the certificates again. It's called Web Request Get Security Info, and what that does is. Um, together with a couple of other APIs for every connection that uh, Firefox establishes. You can have a look at the security info, you the certificate, and um, you can abort loading or let the web page be downloaded depending on what the certificate is inside. So what I did then when I saw that they introduced this get security info API is I thought, okay, um, now it's time for, for an add-on for Firefox again, so I can do my own certificate pinning again. Okay, a bit of a demo, just to see how, how that works in practice. I'll show you in a, in a real Firefox in a moment. Well, let's do it straight away, actually. So today what you do is, um, this is how it looks like today, right? So you go to a web page, it loads, and you can see the lock here. Everything is great. But if the certificate actually changes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really see it. OK, so let's um, install the add-on for that. So it's in, the, it's in the Mozilla store. You add it to Firefox. All right, and then you get a, a new little logo up here. It doesn't really do anything as long as you don't touch it. But for example, when you go to a web page and um, you want it pinned, you can just go there now and say, pin certificate. And then you get a little green uh, logo above the icon, and then you can see that that page is now pinned. Let's do that for... Let's say, yeah, let's do that also for Postbank. So for, for mobile banking, I like to use that for mobile banking so that uh, nobody can give me a, a malicious banking website. You also get a little P up here. And so here you can now see that I have pinned two websites, the blogwirelessmoves.com and the meinepostbank.de. And so just for testing, if this thing actually works, is I can invalidate the pin uh, that the, the add-on has stored. So for example, I click here, oops, invalidate for testing. And so you have seen, so now you can see the, um, the hash has changed. And if you go back and reload the page, it will now alert you to the fact that the, the, the fingerprint has changed. And then you can have a look actually inside at the certificate chain, see if it's actually valid, if you have actually done that, if you own the website, or in case of the, the, the banking service, if you think that 
that sounds legitimate, like, you know, you can compare, for example, the validity dates and you can see the certificate chains and, well, if Postbank suddenly gets their certificate from the Hong Kong Post Office, then perhaps it's not quite uh, what you had in mind. So you are immediately alerted of the fact that something is wrong and um, you can either accept the fingerprint or have a closer look and if you don't like it, then, well, you have to do something else. But in that case, I accept it and then the page is reloaded. But until I accept it, the page is not loaded, it's aborted. And uh, so all your secrets that you have inside the TLS connection, like your cookies, your username and your password, even if it's stored in Firefox, it's not sent to the other side. All right, so really simple to use and a nice indication up here that uh, you have pinned the certificate. And uh, basically what that means is you're back in control now. So you don't have to trust a hundred certificate authorities anymore for your very precious sites you have like online banking or your, your own services at home. Because once the certificate is pinned and nobody steals the keys from your server, you're actually safe. All right. Summary. The web security today relies on a chain of trust and uh, this chain of trust has a couple of very weak links. And so if you don't like those, um, you can now again, in, at least in Firefox, uh, you can take back control uh, over that with a certificate pinning. And it only works in Firefox because that API is only there and Google, for example, does not have it. So at the moment, even if you wanted to, you can't do that in, 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 in Chrome or in another browser. All right, that's it. Thanks very much. <laughs> Questions? Yes, please. Oh, hold for the microphone, I guess. Um, thanks. Um, nice approach. Um, I also think about uh, pinning in my bank side. But um, one question beforehand: uh, Is this is the list the uh, the pinning list synchronized via Firefox Sync? No. So you have to do it on on each device. So there is a possibility to do that, but I have not implemented it yet. Uh, yes, thank you for the presentation. Uh, two questions, actually. Uh, number one, when you were showing your site, mm -hmm. uh, the pin when you invalidated, uh, the, the, the pin warning looked like uh, a regular rotation of Let's Encrypt certificates. Actually, there is no way to tell whether this is a legitimate rotation or somebody is yep. just doing another Let's Encrypt yep. certificate. There is no way to, for yep. me as a user, to tell any of that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's a very good point. So I get, then... The problem is always when you get a certificate which is different from the one you have pinned, you need to decide for yourself whether that change is legitimate or not. So if it's your own site, it's very simple. You know if you have changed your certificate or not. Um, if it's the banking website, you don't. So then you have to make your own decision whether that is actually good or not. And one of the indicators that you can then use is when was the old certificate to expire? You know, if it still had a lifetime of two years, hmm, that's a little bit long. But if it's only like one month remaining, then it was probably a legitimate change. And the alert screen actually shows you that. Um, if you have a website which uses Let's Encrypt and which is not yours, it's exchanged every three months. And uh, there again, you have to decide, yeah, okay, it's Let's Encrypt, it's this website, do I trust it or not? So, and you can't really see that. But most banking websites don't use Let's Encrypt yet, so. Right, yet. <laughs> uh, and uh, question number two, does this cover in any way, shape or form DNS over HTTPS? Mm, it's completely independent from that because what happens is the web browser requests the web page, so don't really care where the IP address comes from. Um, what happens is once uh, the TLS connection is established and the certificate has been sent by the server, then the loading process is interrupted. The add-on is called. I inspect the certificate, and then uh, the add-on lets the or it interrupts the session, and so it doesn't really matter where the IP address comes from. Yeah. No. No, because I only look at the certificate, not at the domain resolution. So. 
that is a diff that's a different security problem. One question about um, pinning not the end leaf certificate but the uh, allowed CA certificate. Mm -hmm. So one approach uh, to not get notified each time the uh, rollover of yeah. the certificate is to just say, I will trust any certificate that comes from Let's Encrypt, but not a certificate that comes from the Hong Kong Post Office. Yeah. Is this a possibility or is this a bad idea or are you planning to implement this yeah. feature? <laughs> um, I thought whether I wanted to implement this or not, and I decided at least for me not to implement it because it's a bit of a dangerous thing. Um, because then your chain of trust, you, you go to the very low level. But I've done a l something a little bit different. Um, there are some services out there, like if you, if you pin Google, uh, like just for a Google search, what you will find out very quickly is that every couple of days, or depending on where you are, Google exchanges its certificates, even though the validity period is very long. Uh, and what I decided here is that um, you can not only pin one certificate for Google in this case or for some other uh, server that changes the certificates very quickly, but to actually trust more than one certificate. And for me, that fixed the problem um, because they, 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 they seem to rotate. They don't seem to change very often. So after two or three certificates at the top level, everything is okay. But your approach is just as valid. I just didn't want to do that because trusting, uh, yeah. But I wouldn't rule it out for the future. So if there is a lot of people who say, I really want to have this, yeah, s uh, send, me a, send me a pull request. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, then thanks very much. <laughs>